I put on a display and there was an experience set in a medieval castle and it wasn't like great, but it was a sunny day and it was nice and I was jousting and it was kind of fun. And then when I took off the, the uh, display, I had this weird like crestfallen feeling. I felt like deflated and I realized, oh, I was in a sunny, happy castle party and now I'm in this gray conference room in USC again. Probably Chris Milk's Beck project, which was arguably one of the first live action VR projects where we shot a, three, a concert sort of in the round with Beck um, and then you know, it was originally developed for a kind of a web experience where you can navigate 360 but then he ported it to um, you know, VR very early on. Um, <laughs> it's so funny because it's so silly. It was VR cinema which is basically you're in a movie theater by yourself watching a movie. Um, well, it's it's rare uh, that you could be you get to be at the birth of a medium. Um, so whether it's a you know it goes big or bust, it's 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 a fun place to be right now. Uh, where we've been focused for since the dawn of uh, of uh, modern media, from television to film, um, on a rectangle. Now we're moving beyond that. We're actually able to step inside and be immersed in the medium. Um, we had, you know, motion pictures as a sort of discontinuous major art form and medium. We had television, we've had, we had games, and we had the net. This is not an incremental version of any of those. This is a completely new medium in which, um, instead of having this sort of passive experience that people have had in every other form, where you're more or less sitting back and experiencing it, uh, at least up until the game era, now you're actually entering a world that, um, your body thinks is real. And so the implications for that, I think, are pretty profound, not just in entertainment, but in, in a whole range of things. VR was the first thing that felt like it actually hit this zeitgeist, where it was a combination of technologists and creatives coming to figure out how to create the best experience as possible. And, uh, you know, when I first experienced, you know, great virtual reality, I, I felt this is it. This is the time where great technology combines with great content, and it's going to change the world. The biggest challenge facing VR right now, I think, is solving the ability to move around and get off this chair and go in a space. The technological barrier. <laughs> I mean, it, it's constantly changing. The cameras are constantly changing. The workflow is constantly changing. Doing things that are in positional tracking, where you can actually physically walk around in a virtual space. Um, I think the hardware and experience needs to mature rather quickly and I think it will over the next couple of years it'll get much slimmer and lighter and easier to use. So the biggest chain challenge that faced motion pictures in order for them to get good was that you had to have people get used to certain conventions so for example the idea of somebody entering a room and then fade to black and it comes up and they're leaving the notion that that was eight hours later and their work day had ended that was not automatic. It took time for people to get that convention and not be confused. So it's the grammar of VR, the, the, the idea that people get, oh, that's how this works. Now I get how to participate in that. So I think the biggest challenge is creating great content. And that's why we're in the space. And you know, that's what we seek to do is, you know, we want to create the best, the quintessential, kind of the seminal pieces of, of virtual reality content that set the stage for everything that comes in the future.